Hello and welcome to episode 55 of the Roker Report podcast, our first one back since the winter break. I'm joined by Connor Bromley. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm the only one here not ill, so did happy you get, days. Did you get anything nice for Christmas? Any Sunderland related gifts? Uh, I got Pierre Reed's book. That was the only oh, Sunderland related gift. Did you? Yeah. I'm not ready. We've got Gav as well. <laughs> <laughs> right, I've uh, looked at the photos in the middle. Very good. Everyone does that. Right. Yeah. Worst part about that present, though, I actually bought it. Like, I got given money. Like, oh, I don't know what to get you. Go and get your own presents. So I got the book and I don't even think I've looked at it. I think it's bad when uh, uh, it spoils it when you when you look at the pictures in the book before you've read it. I think spoils it. Mm. Spoils it. That's because you're like reading picture books, though, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm still <laughs> colouring in. So, <laughs> alright. So we've signed somebody today. We've signed Jake Clark Salter. Who that that name's going to be a handful, like definitely. Had- Still can't get me head around this. Uh, it is, he's, read it. he's got a hyphenated first name as well. It's Jake Liam space Clark hyphen Salter. So that is that is odd. That can you imagine what like, everyone's dad's going to be like trying to pronounce that? <sighs> be imagine or, the or announcer close. at the ground trying to know. <laughs> He struggles on most names, remember? <laughs> double, uh, double barreled. What do I make of him then? I haven't, to be honest, I've, I've only read about him. I know nothing really. Pretty much the same. Like, yeah, I've uh, never seen him. I think, I think with the uh, the article we've got up on the site, Mike. Uh, give people a little bit of clarity on who he is because we've uh, spoke to a couple of journalists who've watched him play a fair bit so you know they've provided some insight I mean um, it would appear that he's pretty good with the ball not the biggest lad mm. not the quickest but um, comes with plenty of promise I mean I remember when when we first brought the news on the site I think it was Friday um, Chelsea fans were tweeting us to tell us you know oh, he should have got a chance with our our first team and never did it's always good when a team says that Aye. Um, but I, I guess people have just got to look at it this way we're, we're desperate for fresh faces just anybody really and uh, he provides that at least and hopefully he's the first of many you know it's um, if, we, if we look at the, the guy that we've got in charge of recruitment now Neil McDermott these are the type of transfers that we're kind of expected from him, you know, young players coming from top academies because that that's his expertise, really. He was, when he was working at Adidas, he was um, recruiting people to endorsement deals uh, at a young age, so he knows a lot about young it, players. It doesn't look like we're going to sign anybody permanently either, does it really? No. I think we're pretty much screwed on that front, um, mm, mm. which well, I think if we do get anybody, it'll be as a result of selling one or two. Yeah. Um, yeah. There was a suggestion today that um, Fabio Barini might be sold early to a different club, but that's been quickly quashed. It was a rumor that turfed out in uh, in Italy. The, um, uh, the, the buyout clause, Milan's buyout clause, is only six million pound at the end of his loan or something, isn't it? So it's not it's not a huge amount. I mean, it could help us maneuver a little bit, but we'll probably just pay off the fee we paid for Barini. <laughs> yeah, six, yeah. six million euros is the is the apparent fee. Um, so it's five point three million pounds, isn't it? Something like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I mean, I don't, I don't think it's going to do us any. I, 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 a good point was made last summer about all of that. Um, you know, we aren't going to have another Jordan Pickford to sell this summer. No. Um, which is why so many players are out on loan because next summer they can be sold. Gillibodji, um, Barini, Lenz, Lenz Kazri. You know. It makes sense as well from, I don't want to go all uh, accountancy, but from a tax perspective, they don't want to make all that money this year because they have to pay more tax on it. So if they make it next year, yeah. then it splits the profits over two but years. I think, I think in terms of this window, really, we've got Kone and Dong if we're lucky um, I mean even then I th- I'm saying if we're lucky I think we'll be lucky to sell Kone really he's barely played for the past year and, mm. and when he has, played, when he, has he hasn't been very good and he's 29 year old coming up I think he's. Uh, I think he's, he was, he's missed the uh, he's missed the boat Kone hasn't he really with the, uh, with the Everton completely um, but I think you know when when Sam Aldice was asked about him, he kind of played it down. I think that was him being clever because he knows mm. if he if he waxes lyrical about this fantastic defender that Sunderland have got, it might drive the price up a little bit. So he played it down and he said, "Look, um, he hasn't played very much recently. He hasn't played particularly well." Blah blah blah. But I think come come the last couple of days of the transfer window, you might see a bit of interest there from Everton because mm. Aldice he's mates with his agent and he Aye. and that's part of parcel of when you have Sam Aldice as your manager. With it comes, you know. He, he likes his bonuses that he gets from buying players from people he knows and like they've just signed somebody from a Turkish side there for 25 million euros I'd never and, heard of him and me, nor me but apparently it's a client of one of his mates it, so there we go it's all about um, who you know not what you know it seems these days yeah. the thing is though the players he gets are good I mean, he gets yeah, Coney yeah. for 4 million he's going to make Coney the player that we oh, had he, he works with him he works with him as well like he, he seems to be able to kind of work with problematic players. Gav, Gav's right phone one. going off yep. to, to oh, it's a rookie mistake. How will everyone be now? It's, twi- it's Twitter as well. So we'll go to we'll go to Twitter for some reaction for the Clark Salter deal. We've got Chris Wintons who says at the moment I believe that anyone, particularly a young up and coming international player, would like to come and play 
this trade for us. I hope he gives it everything he's got. I agree. However, it'll be interesting to see whether he's ruined or not in like three months time <laughs> it's surprising that Chelsea are like willing to throw somebody into the deep end here because it must be known in football that this is a nightmare well, look, at, look at Galloway uh, the thing is he's one of many many players that Chelsea loan out they're not oh, really God, bothered it's like a farm aren't they oh, yeah, I ridiculous. suppose we might have been the only championship team that wanted him so. no no I wouldn't even say that I think I think um, we've probably probably had this deal lined up a while actually mm. Um like I said before, you know, McDermott, who's in charge of recruitment now, probably knows them very well and knows people who know people. And that's just the way we're going to, that's the way we're going to operate in this window. I think we're going to have a few more just like this lad mm. coming in. There's, there's, there's been uh, some stuff on our site today again and Metcha, the Man City striker, um, apparently wanted by us. So there's another thing. Again, a player you know. I know nothing about. Um, I don't either. Top scorer in the in the team in the under twenty threes, mm. I think. Mm. Big part of the side that won the under twenties World Cup. Yeah. Um, they all seem to be coming from the same sort of area, that sort of age group. Uh, Lee Barker comes in and says that he's concerned that of all the players are linked so far, that they're all young lads, um, and there's a lot of pressure uh, to get us out of a hole on on the young shoulders type thing. I kind of agree with that, but I'd rather see us place kind of an emphasis on youth, even if it's loans, than. Paying overpaid, inflated wage packets to, you think to jobbers, summer, you know what I mean? When we brought in what McManaman and Wilson, we all went, good signings. Like every single person they did, and we're like, yeah, you yeah. know, the players who are fringe Premier League Championship players, and we brought them in, probably give them a big wage for the fact that we didn't pay anything for them up front, but they haven't benefited with us, so maybe the route will go down now where it's going to be similar, free loans, essentially. I just hope the lad stays fit as well because, like, we're just safe to sign injury prone players. Yeah. Oh. I, I think when you're, when you're talking about the somehow window as well you've got to take into account that we took Galloway as well mm. and we all thought that would be a good deal for us and well, Gal- Galloway, came, Galloway came higher rated than Brown he did um, it's all about if, you've got to take into consideration what Chris Coleman says really and he talks a lot about I just want people who are in the in this you know to, to work hard and are in the battle with there's a comment after the game the other day about not want kittens in a dog fight aye, aye. Um, he doesn't care how old they are he just wants players who are willing to come here and battle, mm. um, and I think, I think, irrespective of age, it, he's, he's not really particularly bothered. He just wants players who are really um, see this as an opportunity to to progress, really, because you you know this, you've got this lad here, the centre half. I mean, does well at Sunderland, he'll earn himself a Premier League move in the summer. Yeah. Um, it worked you know. for us so often in the past as well, the loan market. I know it's, it's hindered when the fact we couldn't build a team, but the amount of good young loan players we've had in the last 10, well, but even, since even Roy the last, Simpson. Last time we were in the Championship, Simpson and Evans were two of the players that turned our season around, around yeah. for me. Yeah, no um, And, you know, no, they came here with no expectation at all. Look at Johnny Evans now, obviously. He uh, uh, yeah. should be at a, a, a bigger club than West Brom, I would suggest. Well, he, there's news today, be, yeah. news today that he's off to either Arsenal or Man City, isn't it? So uh, Man City's the one who's been desperate for him since the summer. <laughs> I, I think he'd fit into that Man City side very nicely as well. Mm-hmm. But uh, you, you mean, I mean that, that players like this, this Clark Salt, a guy, he's got to look at stuff like that and think, you know, Sunderland has done a player like Johnny Evans, the world of good in the past. Why couldn't I do the same? Mm. Um, I, I guess the proof will be in the pudding. He's got to come straight into the team and and. And and work, I guess. Um, we haven't got any left foot defenders, I don't, as far as I'm aware. So you know that spot's open for him if he's prepared to take it. He's going to come in and play, I would imagine, because why else would Chelsea let him go? Mm. Um, but on the flip side, you, you've got to take into account he's inexperienced. He's only ever played league football, one appearance for Chelsea, I think, about a year and a half ago. Um, and then other than that, he's played a bit of football for Bristol Rovers in League One. Ah, uh, he's he's played. He's got. He's got 13 professional games at club level to his name. He's got 12 at Bristol Rovers, one at Chelsea, and then he's got what? 21. 21 England under 20, under 19, and under under 18 caps. So yeah. he's not exactly. So he's had to make his mark, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. He's had to he's had to show um, show Chelsea, I guess, why he's worth a chance. Not only Chelsea, but anyone else looking looking inwards are trying to make. I mean, qu- quality tends to out, but I'm just concerned that like he will be getting thrown in right at the deep end. For a, for a guy who's pretty inexperienced, I mean, okay. if if he's good enough, you, you're old enough, that's and he'll, it, he'll be able to exactly deal with it. it. But uh, I'm just slightly concerned. I mean, he's born in 1997. That's scary. Isn't it? That's scary. <laughs> he's, he's really he's scary. A hell of a lot younger than I am. But uh, no, I, th- I think he's. I think he's really. He's he's got to see this as an opportunity to progress his career. Really, mm. um, we we are desperate for reinforcements. Like I said before, and 
why not? Why, why not come here and, and make something of yourself? I think that's... Uh, Coleman's been pretty clear on that since he came. Uh, not just about new players, but the current ones. That This is a fantastic opportunity playing for this football club. And if, if you don't appreciate it, then you're better off elsewhere. Simple mm. as that. Um, obviously, I, I would imagine this is something they've been working on for a little while. Uh, it's, what, 7th or the 8th today? 8th, 8th of January. Yeah. Um, so, for us, this is pretty early we don't normally do a business this early in the window mm. um so I'm, I'm just i'm just glad that we've identified somebody we think and improved the side and we've been pretty quick to get him in i mean he's got he's got great pedigree at youth level like hopefully that translates he's won the fa youth cup twice the away for youth league um and he's been like in and around the chelsea squad like pre-season tours and mm. and stuff like that so and john terry's come out in prison before so you, you yeah, hope yeah. that he'll be able to john john terry said he would like him to be his replacement mm, a couple mm. of years back said he reminds him a lot of himself at a young age very vocal which i think is a big key asset which we could do with at the minute yeah, I, I mean i was at i know we'll get onto it soon but i was at the game at the weekend at middlesbrough and i was very close to pitch side and i'm not normally that close for games uh, but my tips were quite low down and one one of the mi- big things made me friends notice when we were at the game was you know, Sun and players don't seem to talk to each other. There's not many, uh, many of them are very vocal on the pitch. I guess that's what you kind of like when you haven't got a Lee Catamore or a Gibson on the pitch. Yeah. Mm. Um, so maybe that, you know, if he can bring that side of things, then fantastic. You know, we, we, we need as many leaders as possible. Uh, I think his pedigree, like you say, at youth level would suggest that he's he's got a bit of something about him. But, I mean, it's going to count for nothing when it comes to a Saturday and he, he steps out on that pitch. Uh, we've got a huge game coming up. Um, Cardiff uh, I mean I know they're on a p- poor run but oh, he's, he's going to gonna be thrown straight into it my um, dad's team Cardiff so <laughs> he's going to be thrown straight into it at the weekend and um, he has hope and he, he, he swims I guess because you know it, it, <laughs> nobody more than us want, want these kids to, oh, to I... succeed but Brendan Galloway is a prime example of how not to do it mm-hmm. and I would, like to, I would like to think that you know he's maybe looked at that himself and went you know, I, I'm going to get a chance here, but I've, I've got to, I've got to be able to swim. I can't, mm. I can't, I can't flounder like some players have. Personally, I, I think I'd quite like to see Coleman start using Embleton, and I know he uses Gooch and Honeyman and Madrin Asoro, but like even Robson, bring him in again. I think it's time to yeah. just start putting your faith in them. It, it frustrates as well. Like Falkirk have got um, Andy Nelson on loan, and is it Ethan Robson? No. You- Ethan Robson just played you're awful with names I know I'm terrible What's Tom Robson Tom Robson he scored and he, he scored his first professional goal and um, Nelson got the assist and they're, yeah, go, yeah. they're going out and proving themselves it's like why can't they be doing that here I know Scottish football's not the greatest but give them um, a chance you know it, to be honest though that level is sort of where some of these lads need to be going and prove themselves yeah, yeah, before they true. make it here ideally we wouldn't be chucking these kids in and expecting too much of them which is mm. kind of what's happened like um, I mean Maja made a great impact against Fulham but the last couple of times I've watched him, I've just thought, oh, it's not maybe not quite ready for it. I don't know if this, I don't know if the system suits him particularly. At the weekend, there was no near enough bodies around him, and he was struggling up against. I mean, Ben Gibson was a was one of the you know top central defenders in England not too long ago, outside the top six, and he was up against him the other day, and I think he he struggled a little bit. But that's yeah. to be expected. He's only he's only young. He's what nineteen year old. Really you know? young. Um, and ideally, you would be letting someone like Josh Madja go out to a League One side, maybe, mm. just to just to get a bit more experience there. But the situation that we're in, we need these lads to be able to, you know, as I said before, swim. Um, Embleton, Embleton, and Soro are two for me who maybe could be getting used a little bit more. If we, if we're the situation we're in, we can't really afford um, to overlook anybody. I guess. No. Um, one of the big things for me at the weekend was that. We just lacked any sort of movement, mobility on the break. Um, I was surprised he didn't start with Azora at the weekend. I was. I, I, I thought he'd be I perfect he, that game. I thought he might have started ahead of um, Honeyman, who's played pretty much every minute since Coleman come in. Mm. I, I mean, thought I mean, he might have got a rest. To, to get onto the Borough match, for me, it was disappointing that the performance was disappointing. I accept that, you know, we had, what, 13 first team players fit and such like, and. You know, it was a bit of a thrown together squad, but there's just the, the lack of kind of lack of any desire. I, d- I just yeah. didn't think they wanted it. I didn't. I didn't get the score. impression at all from the off. It was ten minutes we in, in the second half? That was it. A little flurry. Yeah, and and it was once the pressure was off, we started to play a little bit. Um, I don't know who I blame necessarily for that. I think I think we were kind of hamstrung with the team that we put out. I don't think anybody when that team came out an hour before kick off thought we would get anything yeah um 
but you expect them at least to run themselves into the ground. Yeah, there was one pleasing aspect, which was obviously the performance of Ethan Robson. I thought he'd done really well. Yeah. Um, I saw the, I think it was the Sun and Echo, gave him like a five or a six in the player ratings. I wasn't too sure about that. Mm. Pretty much everyone out sat around thought he played really well. Um, particularly as the game progressed, and they, as I say, once the pressure was off, I mean, or I went 2 0 up and. Then in the second half, kind of just sat back and and didn't really push themselves oh, to exert themselves too much. But it suited Robson. He he got on the ball. Um, he moved it very calmly, which is all he does. If anybody's ever watched him, that's exactly the type of performance he gave. He's not going to pull up any trees. Nobody's going to watch Ethan Robson play first team football for Sunderland and think, God, what a player. Because he's very he's very um, unspectacular, tidy. Reminds us a lot of Jack Callback when he come through. I mean, I know people might groan at that, but that's the type of player he well, is. You, you, you sometimes you need a player in the middle that keeps you ticking over. That's 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 all he is. And I mean, if you can put him next to somebody with a bit of energy who can create, mm. that, that's a good combination. Um, there was one moment when the ball come across him, and he was kind of going into a fifty fifty. The the ball sort of loose coming across to him, and he. Um, he flicked it and turned and went the other side of his man and, and received the ball. So that was just really good. Mm. You know, very confident player. Um, and he, he's, he's a good set-piece taker as well. Um, I'm not saying we can expect miracles of him, of course, but we need players to start stepping up from the, from the youth side. And he took his chance definitely at the weekend. It'd be interesting to see if Coleman actually uses him against Cardiff. I think it probably depends on such. But um, You'd think he's earned it. Every, yeah. every time the young players seem to build momentum, though, they just don't seem to get like thrown in. Like Azoro played really well against Redden. And then he didn't. I don't think he came on for the next game. Mm. He was. I, th- I think there's two sides though, because you have got to protect them as well, and you've got to guard against yeah. this this unrealistic expectation that they're going to come on and do something every time. Do you know what I mean? I know Madger and Asoro came on against Fulham. And no, you're not wrong. The but game. I, just I think, think it's although we need these players and we are relying on them in a sense. I think it's it's a big ask to to put them from, on and do something every time. But from his perspective, though, if you do something, re- if you look at the team that's playing really badly and you do something really good, yeah, you're and then be you, wanting, you don't get be, in the team the next yeah, game, you've got to, you've got to be, be wondering, again. why is yeah. McManaman in over me when he got sent off Street League last week? Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think I wrote about it after the game. I think Cal McManaman's maybe ran out of chances for me. Yeah. Oh, he, need, he needs to drop out the side again and I would probably start a sorrow ahead of him. Um, I just think we we'll lack the, the prob- problem when you play five at the back. Pace for me, we we'll lack. Well, well, that's it. The problem when you play five at the back is that you're obviously to play five men at the back. You're taking somebody out of the midfield or mm. the attack. So for you to successfully build an attack with a five-man defence, you, you need you need to have players who can get forward on the break quickly. Yeah. Um, which is what we we don't seem to have had since we went five at the back. And Again, that's what Wales I've, had. Yeah, I've I've I've, I've wrote. I wrote this to, I think went up today or yesterday I think it was this morning um, but really when you when you look at you look at the way we played at the weekend we, we don't have any width from the full backs because they're not quick enough to get up and down I mean Oviedo when he did get forward was very very poor against Borough but you need you need you need to have players in those even in that in, in that three up front you need to have players with pace who can get forward quickly I mean we don't have a great deal of technical ability where central midfielders aren't going to uh, boss teams I mean we only play with two in the middle so we need to have pace up front for me, mm. um, and which is why I would probably start Joel Asoro. I am not. I'm not his biggest fan. Don't get us wrong. I don't think. I don't think Asoro is going to solve all of our problems. But I think until Coleman has more options all of him, he, he might have to start playing and, and yeah. just just to see if we can get something. Because I mean, Card is such a huge game now. Um, Last time we went there was the two-two. I was, I, I was there. Were you there? I was. Good was day. That callback score. That was on New Year's Day, wasn't it? Uh, I think it was the twenty-eighth of December. Was it? It was just a bit after. It was a good game. Though. Well, it was terrible for eighty minutes. And yeah, and then <laughs> we'll turned alive. Yeah. I, I wonder if Coleman hasn't kind of put Soro and Madger in as much because of the injuries they've had as well. I'd imagine he's kind of he's protecting them in that sense. I know they're back to full fitness yeah, now, but I you're probably right, especially with Madger. I don't think I don't know if he can maybe trust the Soro. Um, he gives the ball away a lot. Mm. He's just young and he's yeah, just yeah, oh, yeah, of course. Player. I mean, he's, he, you, like I say, you can't expect too, too much of these players. Um, he's not, he's not as composed as you would like from a wide player. I mean, we watched there at the weekend. Adama Traore for Middlesbrough was absolutely outstanding. Yeah, it was good. But what the hell was Jason Steele doing? Oh God, I thought we were going to have to talk about him. Uh, yeah, but no, we've got to touch on Steele because. I've never I, I don't remember a worse goalkeeper like Kelvin Davies I think he's just got no com- I, I think he's a bad goalie but I think he's not as bad as what he's shown at the what's, he no what's he confidence? coming out to, 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 try, to try and get the ball they trickled into the net it was pathetic it was a it was a an act of a very 
well, I keep a very low on confidence. Aye. I mean, like I say, I was in the stand. Very low on brain cells as well. <laughs> I was in the stand, and every time the ball, there wasn't the ball boy wasn't very forthcoming with the ball, and he had to keep retrieving the ball himself from the stands, which meant he had to face the Sunderland fans, and you could just tell he was dreading it. Like, you kind of um, then he was getting a bit of booing after the second goal, which was, to be honest, absolutely horrific. Yeah, I don't, I don't like the booing, but no, I, I don't, I don't either. But I mean, fans pay the that, money. You that know? was so poor that second goal. I mean, I, I've actually only seen it once, which was obviously live and he kind of like dove through the air punched it back into danger <laughs> and then claimed a foul that, the I, think, I think he's um, I think he's over eager as well you know I think he's just I, he's, don't, I mean he's, he's not very good but I think he, he he wants us to with every act he feels like he has to make some sort of he can save a shot but he, he puts it in the wrong place but he parries it straight back yeah out. he just <laughs> like the, amount, even the Celtic game in the summer in particular oh I was God. worried straight away because every time he was saving something if he saved it he was throwing it back into like he'd done that a few times and got away with it like. yeah he's yeah. he's alright at saving a shot in the sense of like I can put myself in front of it and stop it but he, he has no control of his rebound which it's just not good enough for that level like at least Reuter can control his rebounds well Hale have been rubbing his hands together watching that right. yeah. that's his that's but his place and pretty much solidified he, now yeah. he has though yeah. taken that step under Coleman and if there's any player that's improved drastically under Coleman it, it's Reuter because he him, does him look at Gibson, decent yeah. the, the youngster Robin Reuter as I called him the other day yeah. not realising <laughs> he was 29 <laughs> in goal oh, well. terms though he, oh, yeah. Hale have been rubbing his hands together watching Jason Steele's performance just I've got, I've got like I've got a lot of time for for goalkeepers especially because I think when you when you've got when you're the goalkeeper of Sunderland there's a lot of pressure on you like it's a lonely lonely the, position oh, well. because the, obviously <coughs> we concede so many goals but like we saw last season what a quality goalkeeper looks like in a bad mm. team this we've, year seen we medi- start, we've seen what mediocre goalkeepers look like with yeah, Minogue, well, that's, I think that's kind of what I'm saying <coughs> with and Routa, Routa, I think Routa, right at the start of life yeah was wasn't very reflective of his actual ability. Mm. We're starting to see what he's more like now, which, to be honest, he looks a lot more confident. Um, he's still useless at corners, though. He, he is. always looks For like his height. He shouldn't be. But he, yeah, he just I like, I like how confident he is. Corners. I like how confident he is with the ball at his feet. I did someone the uh, other day with a, with a nice it, little. Your change. heart's in your mouth every time he does it. But to be fair to him, he's, he's Mignolet you know. used to do that as well. I remember Mignolet used to always do that too. Yeah, and he, he always got a lot away of Mignolet. It. Actually, there's a lot of. There's a lot There's a worse stage, similarities there. Yeah. Well, M- Mignolet is a key, a key example of how confidence can affect a player and how expectation can affect a player because yeah. I mean, the spotlight wasn't on Mignolet so he could shine. Now every every move he makes at Liverpool is scrutinised. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I'm, I mean you must, the, only, the only real loser out of all of this must be Mika. He must be thinking, what the hell have I got to do to get a chance? Mm. I don't think they must rate him at all. He's like. useless. Have you ever seen him? Because he sometimes comes out to do the warm-up and <laughs> saves the shots. So they bring a third keeper out and he just he's useless. Doesn't save him. He d- d- doesn't save him. Like, he doesn't even save James Vaughan. <laughs> the, the, con- the concern, I guess, is that like how long has Steele got left on his deal? You know, it's a three-year, wasn't it? We're willing him away here yeah, and he's only <clears> just signed for us. Um, and who's going to buy him? Really? When, I mean, when you when you consider like how much we have no money now, we have spent half the transfer spent budget, on half a million quid on that lad in the summer. What would you get? Be- with that because now? because he was from the area and he was available. Basically, wasn't really much to do with ability. I don't think he but came. He came with some limited pedigree. You know, he really. played, <laughs> played played in the Olympics fucking ages ago. You know what I mean? <laughs> he's it's just kind of like one of those. Oh, we'll just get him because he's there. You know what I mean? We need a goalkeeper. I could have told them in the summer that he was a shit sign. The same with James Vaughan. Like you, you just don't buy League One quality players and expect them to take the step up, and no. they just haven't. I'd, the only the only real positive from Steele's performance again the second half he made a couple of good saves there was one where um, I think it was Casted shot into the ground and bounced up and he tipped it over and there was another one which he tipped wide but I mean that was too late it was 2-0 it it down it's, it's fair though. enough if those saves are you know like how, the other how end you the draw pit. the game or win the game but when you've already let two howlers Aye. and it's the rat immaterial the other end of the isn't pitch it as well which is interesting because he was he was in front of the Sunderland fans in the first half that's what he made the howlers like when fight. he made the howlers you, you could tell he was Shit, and he sell every time he come near us. Like mm. uh, it was like four and a half thousand right round the goal, and he was bottled, he bottled it. I mm. think basically. Um, other, other than steel, hands of we, steel. <laughs> other than steel, I think I think Brownin did all right. Um, I think uh, we, I'm probably going to get pelters, but I thought George Honeyman did okay. <laughs> was it was it steel dropped that um, that howler on the club's Twitter? Was that steel? 
Did you see the club? The club's oh, was mm-hmm. it the club Snapchat where? Oh yes, it was. That was very funny. Did you see that guy? Yeah, where the... it, got, it got uploaded. It's a, it's a oh, video. Of the, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's his safe like, hands. Yeah, like, nearly palms the ball in the back. Then well, it goes in the back of the net. Was that Jason Steele? Was it? <laughs> that was Steele. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I mean, I'm going to credit the, and the bounds of probabilities. It was more than yeah. Steele. <laughs> <laughs> we always get pelters, but I like George Woodman. I'm a, I'm a fan. It, it, I wouldn't say he played particularly well at the weekend, but it, I mean, it was a very, very poor team performance. Where nobody seemed to be up for it at all. You could, you just got the sense from the players that they, they couldn't they couldn't be asked with that game. Like they mm. just wanted to get it over with. Whereas I thought Honeyman Honeyman put himself about a bit. I it's think- difficult when you're that type of player, though, a player who go- constantly goes looking for the ball. It's difficult if your if your teammates aren't as up for it as you are because hmm. you want you want to pop the ball off as quick as you can to people and if they're just not looking for it like Mark Wilson done a very good job of pretending he wanted the ball <laughs> um, he was he was kind of like getting close and not really asking for it and then pretend he was disappointed I don't know he'd he done a good job of hiding Mark Wilson um, and if you're a honeyman and, you, and you, you're looking for teammates to get around you and support you, that's difficult. And I, I found that a problem with a lot of the games recently. Honeyman, um, honeyman is a lot better than people give him credit for. I wouldn't say he was a fantastic footballer. I wouldn't say that he's a game-changing footballer even. But, you know, he's, he's very much up for everything. I think he's a he's a decent championship midfielder. I think he, we, we've taken a lot of, um, I suppose, criticism for sort of giving him a bit of leeway but I just look at the team and I think at the minute when you look at that start 11 he's one of the only ones who's come up with any credit this year because he does put in 100% every game and you can't say that about anyone else so I'm giving him a 6 every week we're getting criticised for it's because he's the only one who like deserves a bit of praise for actually giving 100% every game I just, it's a 6 you know what I mean it's not, I know, it's not amazing yeah. it's sixes. I just, I just, I just worry that I kind of don't truly comprehend the situation that we're in you know, you you look at like you look at the amount of injuries. You look at the amount of players who've gone missing. You look at the likes of grab and disappear, and like Coleman doesn't have a lot to select from. I've and, got a grab. <laughs> but he feels well. We haven't even got on that. But he he feels as though he can trust Honeyman, which mm. is which is it says a lot about him. You know, it says a lot about about Honeyman as a as a character. He hasn't got a great deal of experience in football, but he obviously cares deeply about playing for Sunderland. At the minute, that's more than good enough for me yeah me too um, come the summer irrespective of what league we find ourselves in that we might be talking about something completely different and it might be a different conversation but at the minute we need players like that we exactly. need players prepared to put a, a shift in we need players that are prepared to go looking for the ball we need players who look gutted and we get beat yeah. because that's what I want if we're going to go down we have to go down with a fight mm. um, I've, I've probably received more stick than most for, for my stance on Honeyman but I'll be honest, I'll stick by it all season because I just think I think we've got to kind of remember where we're at. If if Chris Coleman was sat with twenty million to spend, we might be talking about something completely different. But he's not. He hasn't got that. I think in an ideal world, Honeyman he does need a rest. You can see that he needs a rest I because he's not. Weekend, yeah, he's yeah. not as energetic as he was at the start of the year. He does need a rest, but that's the issue. We don't have anyone to replace him. Like you know, McNair's came back and got injured straight away. Gibson keeps getting injured. Catamore's injured. So you're looking at the central midfield options, and you're like, well, Honeyman is actually mm-hmm. he's like the First only option. On the and then you look, you look at the, like he's, he's played. I remember playing right wing back under Grace, and he's played there centre mid, off the left, off the right, is a ten. He's played everywhere, and he's done his best. He's done all right in every position. <sighs> and I mean. Right, if his best isn't good six. enough, <laughs> if his best isn't good enough, then it's not good enough. But at least, at least, at least he's one of the ones putting a shift in. Yeah, exactly. I don't um, feel like we're seeing Wilson's best at all. No, and there's probably other players we can name him. We probably shouldn't. But the, you know, Chris Coleman hinted at him at it the other day. There's certain players he feels could be doing a little bit more to mm. to make themselves available to him. Well. When 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 you're faced with a situation like that, everybody at the club must know about it. The, yeah. All the players must talk about it, and it must be the elephant in the room when yeah. the players and management are together as well, and it must create a bit of tension. And until until that problem's eradicated, it's going to be difficult to see any sort of major improvement in results. Mm. Um, which is why I welcome signs like Clark Salter because he's just a new face and he's somebody different, and. We've got to hope that as the month progresses, there'll be more players that ilk. Just young lads looking to prove themselves, very hungry. Um, but we'll have to send back, surely. No, I think you can have as many loans as you want. You can only name five in a squad. Oh, yeah. is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's so, right. I still think they would probably send back Galloway. It doesn't make sense to keep him. It doesn't. I'm not sure of the implications of it, though. 
you might receive a fine for sending somebody back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, th- I, th- I, think that, uh, I, I think it's probably Everton, a lot more Everton, com- complicated than we Yeah, Everton comprehend. might command a fee if we send them back yeah. early. Um, Which we, we, we won't want to pay. That's true. Uh, shall we move on to Graben, actually, because he's an interesting topic oh, I'm of glad he's gone. conversation. Uh, you're, you're glad he's gone to see. For me, he's got 12 goals in 19 games. He's received nothing but pelters all season from... I'm not saying I haven't thrown pelters at him as well, but <laughs> and then everyone has this kind of like false outrage when he leaves that he's such a disgrace. And it's like, yeah, but he gave up. He so obviously stopped going. Like in about November, he stopped going who's, for headers. Who's going to score goals for this side now? Yeah, but grab just it. for argument's sake, I know he's not the most complete forward, but we're not the most complete team in the championship, and I, we're I bottom. I can see both sides of this. I think. So, so can I, I'm just I, playing devil's advocate yeah. to piss Connor off. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can understand the people who are annoyed, and I'm. I'm one of them, actually. I don't. I don't know. I, I get. I see everything as a Sunderland fan. Mm. Um, from my perspective, the job that they have is the most prestigious one that you could ever give somebody. Yeah. So to know that there's somebody in, like Lewis was grabbing who doesn't appreciate the opportunity he's been given. Bear in mind his career before Sunderland. He went to Redden last season. Was largely uh, Cascade. He put out the side three goals in sixteen league games. Aye playing off the wing not playing his preferred position before that he'd signed for Bournemouth the, I think when they were promoted he paid a fortune League, for him as well. and didn't score a goal never in the team before that was that Norwich very unspectacular spell he's come to Sunderland and, and totally rebuilt his career um, or at least done something to restore his reputation as a, as a footballer at this level and he's not up for it sorry but go see you later yeah, I've, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm not like sad to see him go if he's not going to have the, the correct attitude but I just don't understand this whole kind of the, the abusive nature of Sunderland fans when they've thrown nothing but pelters at him all season and he's decided well you know what I don't I, think I'm, it's I'm fair going, to see I'm going now we've not then, thrown pelters at him all season that's like not, 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 that's all, not, not all season but you know he's, he's, he's coming for yeah, some he's, he's coming for, for some criticism, criticism when he stopped trying but and it was so obvious have, he stopped trying and people have said don't play him send him back and he's gone back and people have gone crackers it just doesn't yeah, make sense that, that was the two sides of the coin because there was one side of the coin that was happy that he was scoring goals whereas the other side were just seeing that he was once that, once how many but times are we coming here and being like oh it's great that he scored but he he yeah he do doesn't more. do it like, I, 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 just, I just think he's a goal scorer in the championship we, we haven't got another one you know I, mean? no, I, know, I know he stopped scoring goals recently but, I, but where we're going to get a goal I guarantee from? second half of the season if he moves to another championship team he won't replicate that record he had at Sunderland the record he had at Sunderland I don't think he is a at the minute he's on pace for 25 goals he's not a 25 goal striker in this I just think I just think you look at his career really overall and you, you've you got to kind of wonder what kind of character he is does his face really fit him he's had a lot of clubs um, he hasn't had a great deal of success at them many of them I mean he, he did well when he was at Rotherham, Rotherham initially Bournemouth. at Bournemouth other than that, what's he ever done? You know, it, whatever. Coleman came out after. <laughs> Coleman came out after and was like, well, how many of his goals were important ones? We, we only won that, one game that he scored that's, in. That's very true. You know? That's very true. Um, I, it, it, which you can't be blamed for that, really, because the defence was terrible. And his he, he was visibly frustrated that the rest of his team and parts of the early uh, season. Because I just, I just think that it was very clear what, what, the, what had to happen if this team was going to stay up. And I sound like I'm speaking from the future, yeah, but it's very clear that this team has to be a unit. It has to be like Coleman's wheels. It has to be like, you know... They all need to believe. They do. And mm. if, if if there's a player not buying into it, then they're better off away from you. He was not He was so obviously not buying into it as well. You can tell when the you story broke him about him um, well, going mm. back. Coleman said, Coleman said, didn't he? He said, a mutual soon, thing, wasn't it? Soon as, he said as soon as it was brought up in the press conference that... Bournemouth could recall Lewis Grab and we were looking into our options. Yeah. So they knew they knew weeks ago this was coming. Mm. Um they were just waiting for Bournemouth really to, to, to do it. Who do we get? Who do we get to replace them? One name from, from each of you. That realistically. Well I I guess the one that's been linked, and Mecha from mm. from Man City. No idea if he's any good. No idea if he's gonna make a difference. Is is there any um, anybody either of you think that we should be looking at that we might not be? I think they've got a They've got to look at the sort of low market they're looking, obviously looking yeah, in. We can't it's sign the, anybody permanently unless it's a free. Yeah. Or I mean, unless we sell somebody and make a little bit of money back, yeah. which is why I would... See, I'm even sceptical about that, to be well, honest. Well, true. My suggestion would maybe be Kiefer Moore from Ipswich. Mm. Spent the first half of the season on loan at Rotherham. He was only he's a six-month deal. Really well, hasn't he, as well? Scored like 14 goals in League One. Um, Ipswich have recalled him because they want to sell him. He's only young, he's only 21, I think. They've been um, stung by that before with Jordan Rhodes. But the, we, we just need. Well, he's a he's a big physical player. Um, 
they reckon they only want half a million for him. The, we could do a lot the worse. The thing is, though, yeah. you know, the budget, though, must have... Because they were looking at saying Ross McCormack in the summer or Jordan Rogers. Ah, that was late. heavily rumoured. But they've, they've sent back Grabber now. You got. I think there is a little bit of wages to play in there, so they might be able to get a, a decent loan. God, like, I forgot about Ross McCormack. But similar to what we got with Grabben, though, you could get a player like him. You know, if Jordan Rhodes is available and they just want his wage paid, could the, could they do that deal? I think. I think like, it's it's probably important to remember like transfer windows tend to kick into life in the last couple of days. Yeah, and, effects. and there'll be different players available on the last couple of days of the window than there is now. Um, I think Coleman hinted we needed two, didn't he? Um, maybe up front. So, I mean, if he gets one of the younger lads in, like in Mecha, who's been linked, if he can get him in, and then maybe towards the end of the window, somebody else becomes available, then great. We do need two. Like, I was going to say, I'd, I'd like, I'd like somebody kind of, but this is this is kind of clutching at straws and probably unrealistic. But I'd like somebody proven in the championship, and then somebody who's young and maybe we can get excited about mm. who can it's come d- on. It's difficult in it because do I don't it, know. Make an impact. Do I, an impact. I, I, don't, I don't even know who would. Possibly to attract at the minute. Uh, yeah, that's the thing that the club's got such a kind of bad feeling about it at the moment. And, and Coleman is a draw. Like uh, this is no way Coleman's fault. And he, but he's got a lot of work on his hands. Like is, and his hands are tied. No, yeah, you're not wrong. He's got a almost impossible job. Like if I was playing football manager, I wouldn't touch this job. Like yeah, yeah, I wouldn't even in the fantasy world. He just he's got so much he needs to do, and he's got a squad full of players that I, I would say maybe. 50% are committed to the cause like that's not enough how many teams can say that you, you look at the actual quality that should be there and some of the players have got like McGeady and McManamum you would think would be really good but they've been useless for the last three months mm-hmm. well McManamum the whole season but McGeady's really came off the boil at the start of the year he was the only player I had and now we don't really care if he's in the team or not and yeah it's it, I'd, look I think it's it's been said enough we're just we're so devoid of any depth any strength in any area of the pitch. Um, he could do with four or five signings. I think everybody knows that. Six or seven, maybe? It's it's whether he gets them. He, um, ju- he needs to just get them in a position where we can just about stay up by the skin of my teeth and then drop the Well, he, he supposed, didn't he, after the... Um, what was the last league game? God, the game off uh, fast. Barnsley. He supposed after the Barnsley game that we would need to win 50% of our remaining games to stay up. That's a that's tough that's ask. They need to get a, at the minute. It's about forty-five points. Of problem, stay up is, with the problem is, the problem is, is there. that we've lost so many games of teams around us. Mm. Like, all right, we've got Cardiff next, so we're on a bad run. Admittedly, I mean, we've came up recently. We've come across a long, a lot of teams who have been on bad runs and they, haven't they, been able to beat them. Cardiff but, drew to um, Mansfield. Yeah, in the uh, yeah. in the cup. That, that's I mean, a bad result. That, so, I mean, you could. It's down to your own discretion whether you think this is a good time to play Cardiff or not but after, after that well. we've got, we've got Birmingham, Hull. Birmingham and Hull, oh, sorry Hull, Hull Birmingham game's been uh, moved hasn't it yeah but I mean we've got two weeks off after that yeah but Hull are down there with us well Hull are fourth big bomb game. at the minute mm-hmm. it's another big um, game they've got new Nigel Atkins in there it's, it's, uh, it, it's got to the stage now where every game is must win and I mean when you're bottom of the division it's it's about putting together two three four wins are we capable at the minute no Nah, but, long way. But two two games two games left this month. Like I say, the, the Birmingham. Game. So with two games left this month, we've got to get those out of the way. Hopefully, get some players in, and then it's about February onwards. A bit like when Allardyce was here, and we brought in those three players, which totally changed our season. Those three players didn't play, in, mm. and I remember Kirchhoff played that Spurs game. And it was made, awful. But it was, but, but it was the Man City game, game on the first of February, uh, which changed I, our season. I, to I, me. I remember the um, I remember that lineup coming in and thinking he's put Kirchhoff in at the back, and he he didn't. He played, yeah. played um, central defensive midfielder, and was just brilliant. But with that, that's kind of the sort of burst we need. When you bring all, we've got what three weeks to to change the squad now. If he if he can if he can even just add four players, it'll make a difference. Because at the minute the injuries are racking up. We've got no sort of movement in terms of changing players around, being having options off the bench. Which a month ago, to be honest, I thought we did. I thought we named a pretty strong bench just three or four weeks back I can't remember who it was against I'm interested that um, he, he keeps going with five at the back like I would have switched back to four now because of the injuries like he's playing Adam Matthews at centre back against Barnsley and you're just like that, that's not beneficial to anyone I don't know whether it's the pro- problem is is that I mentioned it earlier we're not scoring enough goals mm. so it something's got to be rethought whether it's his front line or not 
But I, I quite like the look. We're playing four. Cause you, he played four four two the first few games. He, he came we'll in. Be Burton playing four at the back. Yeah, and it, I, I thought we looked alright doing that. I think five at the back might be his future plan. But I just think for getting results at the minute, for keeping it simple in a squad that is pretty bereft of quality, making them play three or five at the back. Depending on how you're looking, it just seems silly. I, I would be going four four two. He's just saying the centre half, though, which would indicate that he's going to continue. Oh, I think he will. The back. I think he will. But I just think at the minute. You know, Adam Matthews was having a really good season at right back. I just think it's or left back. He's been playing. I think, both I think it'll balance out. It'll all around. come out in the wash. Look, Matthews has played in a couple of different positions recently, but it's all been through injuries, hasn't it? I like Matthews. I do. I, I, think, I, I think he's, he's done, improved a lot yeah, this he season. Has. He's shown good attitude, considering he, he. I mean, he had the had the fans really on his back against. Was it Bolton? Yeah, it was. And he, he was no, getting sarcastically uh, applauded. He was, he was really so bad, to though. to turn the fans around from that and to get your head right from that's he's done well. Yeah. I mean, he's a he's a player that Coleman knows well. Does worry is that he never really played for Wales, and I'm like, yeah, no, hardly ever. Um, but he, to be fair, when Coleman's been in charge of Wales, Matthews is his son and <laughs> wasn't getting a sniff yet. So yeah, that's a point. But I mean, he's 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 the type of player, a bit like Honeyman. I think he's, I don't think he's particularly um, gifted with quality. But I mean, he's, mm. he's showing he's up for the fight. Yeah. So he got a good got a good him. delivery on him as well. He Scored. Got that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he got that. Um, the got assist that wonderful for McGee. goal against Millwall. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Keep that fell in the net. Right. We shall move on to some Twitter questions. We've got Jack Ford who asks: When Coleman joined, I think we were all excited by the prospect of Danny Ward coming in on loan, but. Has the recent form of Reuter made this a less urgent position to recruit? I would say initially, yeah, but well, we given how crap Steelers like, you probably. But maybe they do need it. It's not like a, it's not a priority, but like we could, just, we could yeah, definitely improve. I, I think it's not a priority. I mean, they've even got um, Talbot, who you swear by, has been a decent prospect. And Strzok. Yeah, and Strzok. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that bringing a keeper in is a priority. No, no. I think. Um, I think Raoul has pretty much nailed down that place as first choice. It would be nice to have a really a good competent goal-tube. backup. I just don't, I don't know, I don't know how much better we can get at the minute. Really, Danny Ward. I'm guessing Liverpool probably want to hold on to him if anything because their keeper situation isn't great. Danny Ward's not exactly great. Like he's not. Oh, did he? I mean, he, Huddersfield last year. Yeah, was he? Yeah, mm. yeah, he, yeah, he, won the, he, he, he won promotion with Huddersfield last year. He learned season. something new every day. Um, I think it's a Welshman, you would know that as well. No. <laughs> no. He, he, never, he doesn't really play for Wales often, so it's Tuesday Hennessy. That, Hennessy's that's, another that's one. That's I mean, you look at how bad Liverpool have been up in goal this season, and he hasn't really been given a look mm. in there. Doesn't get, didn't get a look in ahead of Hennessy for Wales, who is not great at all. Yeah. Mm. Um, Who's been linked with us as well? I think Many it's just a, I think it's just a lazy link, that isn't it? Yeah, he's Welsh and he's Welsh, probably you know available. I mean? Right, we've got another question from Peter Wilson. Honestly, how do you all feel at the state of the club? Will we ever see the Premiership again? Why do people still say Premiership? I wouldn't I don't know. know. I was going to correct the Premier League. <laughs> not been the Premiership for about ten years. It's like calling the calling Premiership. It's not <laughs> not anymore, is it? Anyway, um, will we ever see the Premier League again? But yeah, not, will. not for a while. But we'll, will. We'll, I mean, we'll get them. These things happen in cycles. It's right. it's our time to be shit again. Eventually, we'll be back pr- up there, challenging for promotion. This, that, and the other. Well, it's football just, is. It's, it's just the way it is. It's exactly. But the I good mean, times will come again. Um, when he asks about how do we feel about the state of the club, very, very despondent at the minute. I'm I'm a little bit worried of that. Um, even though we're pretty much teetering on the abyss, the the owner isn't prepared to put his hand in his pocket. He's said enough's enough. Um, I just think I just think that. I just think that, irrespective of of what he said in uh, after the sacking of Grace and when he came out and spoke, his feelings on the club and this and the other. It was just, it was, that was just a bloody a group therapy video for well, himself. That was yeah, just. Well, a... I mean, he, I think irrespective of what he said in that video, I think I think he's got to you've got to an, analyse the situation and be like, if I don't put me where my mouth is, yeah, this club's going down and it's going to be worth even less. Well, the irony is that he, he rejected the um, the offers from um, the German consortium and the interest from Full Wool 73, but you'd be lucky to even get what they offered now. Yeah, and um, I mean, when you go down again, you, you're you still going to have Jack Rodwell on your books. Oh, God. Paying 60, 70 grand a week in League One. Yeah. I mean, the, we have some real issues to contend with if we go down again. Um, the stadium, I, I don't even think we need a particularly out. large amount of investment. I think if I think if Coleman was given between five and eight million pounds this window, it would improve our fortunes massively. Mm. There are players playing in League One we could sign right now who would massively improve our squad. You and, you and Sean Brown, who... Um, Edits the podcast at the end of it. Always 
rave on about Marcus Madison. How much do you think it would cost to get him? Because he is he is a he, tidy player. Three, like, four million problem, pounds. problem is, is that is the club he plays for. So although Peter Brown aren't a renowned successful club of the, it's not as though they're ever challenging at the top end of League One. Mm. Um, they do have a good record of churning out players for Championship clubs. Yeah. So you look at like. For instance, what Forrest paid for Sambalonga, Dwight Gale when he went to um, Palace. You know they have a decent record of of developing players. So and you you can you can you can kind of look at those fees they were they receive for those players and maybe market against the ones they've got now. I mean they've got a centre forward there, Jack Marriott. Apparently Leeds are after him. Mm. Um, who's got like twenty goals a season? There's only Harry Kane scored more goals as an Englishman this year. Um, you've got to kind of look at. The precedent, I guess, and think well, he would probably cost a little bit more than I would maybe want to pay. I don't think he'll be reachable. I don't. <laughs> I don't think anybody. I don't think anybody. Any, anybody that, with of, any, of any value really. <laughs> is, but I mean, if like I say, if, but with between five and eight million pounds, Coleman could do a lot with his squad. Mm. Um, but M- Madison's just one example of many players playing leagues now who would most certainly improve us I mean we, we, we lack pace we lack strength we lack height we're all like, over the pitch we lack numbers we lack quality but, I mean I think if you just look at what we, we have flair. got they're very small they're very slow players um, and like I said earlier to play five at the back you need you need, you need a bit of pace on the break there are players playing in the lower leagues who could offer us that mm. and a bit of quality but it's not going to happen without any money mm. and as I said before the owner has to the owner has to recognise that you know he has a duty of care as the owner of this football club to look after it f- effectively and you know, that, that's from our perspective but he probably doesn't see it that way anymore so that's a, that's the unfortunate reality isn't it I would like I would like to ask him what he is playing at genuinely well he, I don't think he's, he's that detached from it he's, he doesn't care he's, mm-hmm. he's in America he, he doesn't have anything to do with the day to day running anymore he's bored of his, his pet project he's, Perhaps, he's probably yeah. not bothered it probably does, I mean it occupies much of our consciousness because of what we do and the fans of the club we are but yeah. probably doesn't occupy his day to day in the grand scheme of things he's just got a bit of a Irritant financial burden that's not really worth which, which is what he'll see. And he's a very rich man, so it's not that much of a financial burden. Yeah, he's, 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 he wouldn't be that bothered. I doubt that Ellis Short thinks about something for football that, on yeah, a daily that, basis. That was, that was my point, anyway. On Ellis Short, um, SAFC North Yorkshire asked the question Do you think Short will allow us to spend anything during the transfer window or will attempt, um, or our, will our attempted survival be done to loan signs? We kind of answered that. No, he probably won't spend anything, and yes, we will rely on loan signs. Mm-hmm. I'd imagine. I would imagine. I would imagine that um, come come February the first, you'll, you'll be looking at another a Sunderland squad with five new loan signings in it. Mm-hmm. There won't be any permanent signings. I mean, Maybe I know a David, free transfer David Cockrell was linked last week. Another lazy link because he's Welsh and free. Mm-hmm. Um, but we were told, wrote a report, we're told that that's not on the table. So mm-hmm. and I'm pretty. I think I'm pretty happy with that. You yeah, know, we've Dave, already Dave we've got McGeady and McManaman not playing very well. Is he better than those two players? No, he's not. You know. not. Uh, Cameron Johnson asks, "How do you think we should approach the Cardiff game?" Which leads nicely onto our preview. Connor, how would you, if you were Chris Coleman, if you were Welsh, gloriously Welsh, how how would you go into the, the Cardiff game? I actually think it's been it's been moved ridiculously for yeah, for half, television half for this, four yeah. weeks' notice. For, for, this, for the sky for the sky gimmick, yeah. which is disgraceful, which is basically Coleman going back to Wales. He's not even from Cardiff; he's from Swansea. So to, to be fair, though, anyway. I'm happy because I'm not going, and it means I can watch it. So yeah, I suppose you have to mess around. I, with I, I follow. <laughs> yeah, you have to mess around. I follow. All for one. Think of the diehards who. I mean, it is pretty shit. Like, oh, it is. No, I don't get one. Like, pretty sure, it, unless you go the night before, you can't get a train in the game now, can you? Well, it'll be like, uh, what, 5, 4 a.m. bus? When I, when I used to live mm. down there, commuting all the way down there is a nightmare. I used to, I used to have to fly sometimes. Into the backwaters? And even that was a... Even, yeah, even that was the end of the earth. Even that was a nightmare. You actually have to go all the way down to Bristol, don't you? I had a flight to Bristol that I had to get... I worked it out one day. I, I ended up getting two taxis, two buses, including the little shuttle bus, an aeroplane, a metro... And a couple of trains as well, all in one day. Nightmare. I couldn't. I couldn't be bothered with going to it. Nah. The rec- I don't think we've sold many tickets either. Well, you, can't, you can't blame people for not going though. I mean, Bottom of the league. Taking everything into account, not just that. I think even well, we've just took four and a half thousand to Middlesbrough. And we're bottom of the league. You know what I mean? I don't think it matters really too much to people. I think it's it's the it's the ridiculous nature of the timing of the game and stuff. Yeah. Um, but anyways, to to answer the actual question, how do we think we should approach a game? Um, pretty much in the way I mentioned earlier. I think I would maybe. Prov- I know there was there was a hint that we might have more than one player in by the Cardiff game, but if we don't, I think he's probably got to 
maybe give a sorrow and Embleton a chance to play. Um, I think he's got to go for the nil nil affair. I think. We got I, think else in. I think we need a win. <laughs> we do need. I think a we win. need to find a way to win. Warnock he's, but I he's, think a, he's a shrewd operator is that nil what you've got to do is though you've got to try and get a nil nil draw and hope that you can somehow score a goal no, no, whether it be from a set piece brick. but, but then mean, it comes down to the like a pace so as you say playing a sorrow might I just think we've got to have something that can get us forward quickly well, ever, um, since, ever since Duncan Watmore got injured we've, we haven't looked like breaking against anybody it's it's, we're, it's we're been so a slow and he was only back for about a game and a half yeah Bless him. it's, it's um, Dunk we, we have to Dunkster. I would. I wouldn't be playing McManaman again. <laughs> no, I wouldn't either. I think I would drop McManaman. I think he, he should go with the Zorro. I think it'd be a crying shame if he went with James Vaughan up front. I think he's probably got to give Ethan Robson another start. Ah, I would. I'd throw him in. I'm mate. not sure who's going to be fit by the weekend. If anybody, you would like to think that would be a couple more players available. The, the only worry would be about playing the likes of Robson and Zorro, is that they've got like Sol Bamber at the back, who's just an absolute machine. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't think a Soros going to get then, much purchase. Then who, who have we got who could? Yeah, who that's, could that's a very like, good I point, mean, yeah. James Vaughan gets eaten up by every single centre defender that plays up against him. Five foot ten target, yeah. man. It's just. It's, well, it's, I, not, I, it's I, not even it's necessarily. That, really, <laughs> because he plays with his back to goal most of the time, he struggles to, to have any impact. He's just a shit. He likes a, he likes a bite on Twitter as well, does he? Uh, he does like a bite. Does, I, he he needs to Twitter really annoys me. I liked him when he first signed because I thought he was going to get his head down at work, and he has, but I just don't bite his fans. I understand you get Stick, but just the last game against Barnsley, from situation. He, I think he lacked a bit of effort. Like compared to normal, he wasn't as you know as much running about, and putting himself about. Yeah, he, he looked. I think he probably regrets coming here. Like, <laughs> wait, he's uh, been he, he was the man at Bury. That's it. You know, he's went from probably having the best season of his career to back to square one with Sunderland. Um, Getting poked. I mean, he's not. A, he's, I wouldn't play him at the weekend. He's not a championship. I don't know why the bottom because he was just never a championship striker. He, 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 I can understand why the bottom. I think. No, I think they maybe we, looked we at, all, we at his goal scoring record last season and felt he could add no, something. You, you know, for for the money we're paying, you can add something exactly. But I don't think. I don't think that we ever for one minute expected to just go into the season with two strikers. No, we didn't. We all said when he signed. We all we all said when he signed. If we go in with him as first choice, then it's concerning. But yeah. if he's an option, then fair enough. But all the way down to deadline day, we thought that Ross McCormack was going to sign, you know, <sighs> and he didn't. Oh, we're going to do a deadline day podcast again. You put him on the spot, yeah. Put him on the spot, yeah. I just uh, thought, you that know. Live show went down pretty well. Like, I think it's hard I, I enjoyed to myself. Episode. I enjoyed yeah, myself. Yeah, we'll definitely do that. Right, we'll go round the table for a uh, uh, score prediction for the Cardiff game, please. Bear in mind they haven't won in five. I think they've lost the last four league games as well. Drew, 2-0 Cardiff. Drew against Mansfield 2 <laughs> dude. I'm say nil nil. I don't, I don't oh, think we'll stand a chance. stolen mine. I'm going to have to change mine now. Probably, probably All right, I'll take one game. nil Cardiff then. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll take nil look. I, I think we're going to get beat, and the reason for it is that recently, whenever we've played a team in a bad run, they've beat us. Mm-hmm. Um, Warnock have them fired. <laughs> whenever we've played a team recently, they've beaten us. <laughs> no, but generally we we tend to play teams out of bad form, don't we? Yeah, I mean, we we'll, yeah. we'll beat Forest the week, and they were struggling, but. We didn't really deserve to beat Forest. I had one shot on goal. Well, there's Bob Bonzi had one in, what, 12, 12 13. I know, and they looked really good. As, like, I don't know if it's us, but every time these Bunsen teams... look like, really good, but they look all they right. They look accomplished. Jimmy they look like, to be pleased that Heckenbottom's getting some, uh, getting some praise. The problem is, yeah. problem is, really, is that pretty much every team in the league, bar Sun and Burton, have pace and Aye. guile out wide, and they have a centre-forward who can handle the ball. You know, like Birmingham, when I saw... The, they came to the stadium of light, and I thought, they're nowhere near as bad as as the league position suggests. I mean, they, they had Sam Gallagher up front. He was brilliant. Yeah, and then is John Aaron Borgara wide. I think that's a, that's a good front three for this league. Is Sam Gallagher still on loan from Southampton? Yeah. Or is he permanent now? No, he's, no, he's alone. He's alone. There's no way Southampton let him go. That, he's a good player. That's like. the worry. I, I was talking about this to somebody before, and I, th- I feel though we are in a better position than teams like Birmingham recruit. Um, in terms not recruit but I mean attract if we're all going for the same players I would fancy us to get them over Birmingham yeah. but the problem is they already have a decent centre forward they always already have decent wingers we don't we don't have that I'm just concerned because you need goals to stay up and I don't see where we're going to score but at the goals. minute we, we've, we that, don't that's why I'm going for the nil we really nil. don't have a goal score and that's that's an optimistic nil nil the thing is how many chances has James Vaughan I was talking the other day how many actual goal scoring chances has James Vaughan had since he signed he doesn't he can't move himself into positions yeah, to he score c- he can't even get himself like he's a chance yeah. I think I think you've got to remember how lucky we were to watch 
Jermaine Defoe for the last couple of years. And oh, you, very there's true. a centre forward who just has unbelievable movement. But you Even can, at his you, age? You can, you can kind of judge players against that and look and go, now I've seen what a good striker looks like for a long time, and now I'm watching one who doesn't have the movement, he doesn't have the, the awareness around the box. Um, it stands out a mile to me. Mm. I think I think that Cardiff, Cardiff are going to relish playing us, um, regardless of who plays up front, Josh Madja or Vaughan. Doesn't matter. I think I think they're gonna they're gonna know exactly what team we're picking because we don't have a great deal of choice. They're gonna know exactly how to prepare and how to exploit us. Um, and until we get new faces through the door, I don't see how it changes. So that's why I've went for a Cardiff win. I think I think is as bad a form they're in. I think we're probably just as bad. So mm. yeah. well, so we've got nil nil from me. What have we got from you, Connor? I'll say one nil Cardiff. And I'll you're say going two nil Cardiff. Well, we didn't put a three word review out this time on the Twitter so I reckon we should do a, a three word review of the Middlesbrough game from, from each of us if you want to if you want to start kind of three words to describe the, the Middlesbrough game or just our current situation in general maybe absolutely dreadfully shit wow Gav dreadfully dreadfully, <laughs> dreadfully. absolutely <laughs> dreadfully shit Um, it's getting worse fucking pish balls is mine because <laughs> that's all you need it's it, getting really? worse <laughs> it's, it's getting worse Right, I'm, I've got it written down there and I've got to remind people of the Thursday podcast where Graham is joined by Mark Poyser. Poyser, yeah. Poyser. To Doing preview the BBC. Oh, is he? I think so, Fantastic, yeah. yeah. Well, you think so? You just I think so. You might be blagging. Used to record we're, a we're podcast. Sure. <laughs> used to record a Cardiff podcast for the BBC. No sound, there you go. So, we'll make sure to, uh, to listen up to that. We've got loads of stuff, as always, on rokerreport.com from our writers. Um, do us a favour, share this pod with your friends. You can subscribe, subscribe, subscribe even, not subscribe, on iTunes, the Acast app, and, of course, YouTube. We're Roker Report at Roker Report on Twitter, and we're on Facebook and on Instagram, which we're promised uh, that was my job wasn't it and I just haven't posted anything on every Instagram. week we say the same I thing ah oh, Instagram blah blah genuinely I give you the login for I know I know and I just haven't used you it I'm sorry absolutely no sack I'm terrible <laughs> new Instagram if, somebody if you want to come forward and be I the was gonna say, Instagram I if, if you, you if you send if you send your make your us app, big on Instagram Insta famous if you if you send your applications into the Roger Report Twitter you might find yourself with an um, Instagram role anybody anybody anybody's better than me because somebody I'm, needs I, to I've run the gram for the I got a new phone last week and I deleted Instagram off it did you just because I got sick of the notifications oh I'll unfollow you then I'm thinking about winding down my social media getting rid of Snapchat and Instagram like slowly maybe uh, Facebook I want to keep Twitter that's Snapchat that's bad eating store people yeah uh, it was better when they had the best friends that was so good oh see that wasn't good and you get caught out stuff like that oh nah well that's if you're a seedy man I'm well I'm not a seedy man I'm just saying you know, well you just said you got caught out it sounds like you're a bit of a dramas, <laughs> cause dramas within friendship groups nothing to do good with me in the, in the uh, copy household when that was rumoured <laughs> <laughs> right on that note we'll end it because I, I want to eat this second wagon wheel because uh, Connor didn't eat his because he's a, I don't like a little bitch a, a little bitch as Kevin Ball once described I, I don't like marshmallows who doesn't like how are you man jammy wagon wheels not even like a alright saws hangers yeah. well we will <laughs> on that note thanks for listening <laughs> see you later